Rebecca. Thank you. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Audit and Governance Committee of Tamworth Borough Council. It's six o'clock and so I open the meeting. Uh, the chair of this committee has sent their apologies and we will be voting for the vice chair within the meeting. So I'll start with the agenda item one, which are apologies for absence and received apologies from Councillor Dan Maycock and Councillor Peter Thurgood. Good, sorry, there are no other apologies. Uh, agenda item two, so I'd like to invite nominations for the appointment of vice chair for this committee. Are there any nominations? Thank you. And seconder. Thank you. Rob Pritchard. Um, any other nominations? And can we just take a vote for Councillor Price to become Vice Chair of the Audit and Governance Committee, please? All in favour? Thank you. That's carried then. So um, that's moved and uh, Councillor Price has now been appointed as Vice Chair. So I'll hand over to Councillor Price to carry on with the meeting. Thank you. Evening, everybody. Um, we're moving to uh, agenda item number three, uh, which is minutes of the meeting held on the 20th of April. Um, that's for a mover and seconder for them minutes. Moved by Councillor Daniels, seconded by Councillor Clark. All those in favour? Thank you. Uh, agenda item number four is declarations of interest. Any declarations of interest from anybody? No, there are none. Uh, agenda item five is the auditor's annual report. Um, so I'll hand over to the auditors to present the report. Thank you, Chair. Um, so this is our auditor's annual report, which is our report on the council's arrangements to secure value for money for the financial year ending the 31st of March 2022. So the financial year that ended sort of 15 months ago now. Um, in general, this is, this is quite a good news story. Um, it's worth pointing out that we have not identified any significant weaknesses through our work, and that's, that's the same as last year. Um, we have raised some improvement recommendations, um, but an improvement recommendation isn't necessarily an indication of weakness, it's just something that we think could be done to strengthen the arrangements that are in place at the Council. Um, so the report does follow up on the improvement recommendations that we raised in the previous year on page uh, 20 of our report, 28 of the pack, um, and we are satisfied that action has been taken against the majority of those um, recommendations, although not all of them have been fully closed down, um, and we have raised a number of new recommendations this year. Um, these are predominantly focused on sort of the Council's future savings plans and, and what the the next big plan is um, following the completion of the reset and recovery um, scheme. There's also a recommendation about the high number of internal audit recommendations that there were, but that has um, been sort of actively addressed over the last 12 months. And, and due to the, the delay in us actually getting this report to you, that one's not as significant now as it was at the point we're reporting on. And there's also a couple of recommendations around procurement and, and performance monitoring of contracts. Um, if anyone's got any specific questions about anything in the report, we're happy to answer them or take them away if we're not sure of the answer off the top of our heads. Um, but there's nothing particularly concerning in here that I think it's worth drawing your attention to. Um, and I think the other thing just worth mentioning is that now that we have issued this report and completed this work, we will be able to certify the 21-22 external audit um, as closed and completed. 
And that was all I was planning to say, unless anybody's got any questions. Uh, Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair. Um, you'll appreciate that I'm new to this committee, so is, um, I just had something to ask about. It was on page six of the report. It said that savings are only delivered to members on an exception basis. Um, why is that? Thank you. Um, that might be a question that's better for you. Um, I think that's probably referring to our budget monitoring throughout the year. We uh, report on um, variances by exception. So if something is a, a, you know, a significant under or overspend, then we would bring it to management and members' attention. But more va minor variances from budget, then we don't tend to report on those explicitly. Thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Daniels. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you as well for your explanation when we were looking at page 20 about how I'm looking at item 3. When it was written, it may have been more that cause of concern, but now due to changes, people are more happy with it. Um, I'm just looking at item number 5 about the council does not monitor its spend by supplier. Is it possible to get any more information on that at all? Thank you. Um, it's something that we recognise as a potential improvement, but we've not put it in place yet. That's whereby we can um, track total expenditure per supplier. Um, we have run reports for our own internal use on an ad hoc basis previously, but it's not something that we monitor or report on on a regular basis at the minute, although it is recognised that, um, as the external auditors pointed out, would be um, an improvement recommendation, which we would look to, to implement going forward. No, that makes sense. Thank you very much. Any further questions from anyone? No? Okay, so uh, the recommendation is to endorse the auditor's annual report. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that? Made by Councillor Pritchard, seconded by Councillor Doyle. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for that report. And that moves us on to agenda item number six, which is the external audit plan. And I'll hand over to the auditors to present this one as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So, hello, everyone. Um, for those that I haven't met, my name is Will Guest. I'm the audit manager from Grant Thornton, and I've worked with the council for quite a few years now, ever since I um, first started at GT, really. So, this is our audit plan, which sets out our plan for the audit of the financial statements for the year end 31st of March 23. I will take the report as read, but there are some points that I just want to pull out of the report. So on pages 7 to 9, this is where we set out the significant risks that we've identified and the work that we will do to address these significant risks. The first of these is the revenue fraud risk, and that's presumed under ISA 240. Now, we have rebutted this risk for the council due to the nature of the income that the council generates, and we've also considered the fraudulent nature of expenditure, but we do not think under Practice Note 10, and considering Practice Note 10, that there is a fraud risk there, so we have rebutted that. Um, for the next risk on that is management override of control, and that is also presumed under ISO 240, and we will cover off this risk under our work on uh, accounting estimates and also our review of journals posted during the period. We also have significant risks for PPE valuations and pension liabilities, and this is due to the significant value and the complexity of those estimates. It's not unique to Tamworth, to be honest. It's something that you will see across probably all of our local government clients. Uh, but we'll review the valuations of PPE and we may pinpoint that risk as we look at the values report, but until we receive the values report, we can't say where that risk will fall. Pages 12 and 13 set out the progress that the council has made against our prior year recommendations. And as you can see, they've not yet been implemented, but it will be something that we'll continue to monitor through the audit process this year. And page 15 sets out uh, one of the changes in auditing standards in the year, which is ISA 315. It will lead to an increased level of work as we have to review your financial systems in more detail. Uh, and it will also increase some of our sample sizes, which will just mean we'll need more evidence to back up uh, some of the areas that we will be testing. Page 16 sets out our approach to the value for money work. 
uh, for the 22-23 year and we've not identified any risks of significant weakness at this stage. The audit fees are set out on page 19 and there's a breakdown on page 20 and just finally we'll commence the audit next week. So we're initially starting remotely but with a view to be on site as the audit progresses through. Uh, we're trying to complete the audit by the end of September and that is hopefully when we'll be reporting to our audit findings report to yourselves. Happy to take any questions. Thank you for that. Has anybody got any questions on this? Councillor Doyle. Just the one question. With the audit fees, uh, with most of us now doing remote working, is that likely to um, slow the process down or increase the cost of the fees? So we'll be doing a similar process to how we did it in the previous year. We worked quite well with the council last year in terms of that balance between remote and on-site. I can't see into the future. I don't know if there will be an issue this year, but last year it worked well. And I'm not foreseeing any immediate fee increases yet. All right. Thanks. Any further questions? No. Okay, um, so the uh, recommendation is that the committee adopt that report. I'll move on a second. Now. Councillor Pritchard, seconded by Councillor Doyle. All those in favour? Uh, it's carried. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for that report. Um, and this brings us on to agenda item number seven, which is the internal audit annual report. Um, and that's the annual report and quarterly update. Uh, so I'll hand over to officers to present the report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to present my annual report on internal audits work during 2022-23, together with the sections outturn key performance indicators for the financial year. I'm asking for your endorsement of this report. The report is brought to this committee annually at the first meeting of the municipal year and provides an overview of the work completed during the 2022-23 financial year. It also includes my overall audit opinion on the Council's framework of governance, risk management and internal control. And this is contained within Appendix 1 of this report. I can report to the committee that on the basis of audit work completed, internal audit's opinion on the Council's framework of governance, risk management and internal control is reasonable in its overall design and effectiveness. We have highlighted during the year weaknesses and exceptions and these have been discussed with management and recommendations have been made and those recommendations are monitored by myself as part of the follow-up. I can also report to the committee that no specific issues were brought to my notice through the work undertaken during the financial year. As previously indicated, my report includes an overview of the work completed by internal audit during this last financial year. And overall, internal audit completed 89% of the annual audit plan. Our key performance indicator in this area is for 90% coverage. This shortfall was due to the income management audit being completed after the 31st of March 2023, and events management which, was being, which has been deferred to the 2023-24 audit year. I can report that following the, the end of the financial year, income management has now been concluded and that will be reported at the next meeting of this committee. I will also schedule the events management audit in due course and this will be included in my quarterly reports I make to you during the municipal year. Within my report, I've included the findings of each review together with the number of recommendations for action and also an overall assurance opinion. A summary of those reports issued and the issues raised is contained in Appendix 1 of my report. Committee have previously required analysis of all high priority recommendations and those arising from no or and limited overall assurance reports which are followed up by audit. As at the end of quarter 4, 31st of March 2023, there are 66 recommendations outstanding of which 51 are currently overdue and these are being followed up with management. Of those recommendations overdue, seven were high priority recommendations, 28 were medium and 16 were low priorities. Meetings are held with assistant directors to follow up on actions and an overall analysis of the recommendations is in the table to my report. For information, I've also shown a graphical representation of outstanding audit recommendations over time since quarter two 2020-21 when comparable data was being collected. 
This shows an overall trend of reducing amounts of recommendations outstanding. Taking high priority recommendations as an example, my table shows that at 31st December we had 13 high priority recommendations outstanding, but during the quarter we closed five of those recommendations, however four, four, recommend, four further recommendations were raised during audit work during that quarter, which, which gives an outturn at the 31st of March of 12, recommend, 12 high priority recommendations. Performance measures I would like to highlight in the report show that we have missed targets for the draft report issued timings, timing of closure meetings and reports issued following the closure meetings. During 2022-23, I'd like to highlight that we did procure an external service provider who began work in September and their peer review timescales meant that we could not always issue reports as promptly as set out in our KPIs. Both myself and BDO, the external, the, the external provider, discussed these arrangements. However, these, these peer reviews maintain the quality of both the audit work and ensures compliance with the public sector internal audit standards. So from that, that perspective, I would suggest that we, we would want to maintain that quality going forward. I'm more than happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions from any members? Councillor Daniels. Thank you, Chair. Um, regarding the last point, and also thank you for a brilliant summary, um, having weighed up kind of the pros and cons versus the, the deadlines where you say those kind of timelines weren't always met in agreement, did the benefit for you still outweigh that kind of slight deadline alteration cost? Yes, there's, there's I, I would suggest from, from my internal audit perspective in relation to delivery of the internal audit plan and that work we need to ensure that the quality is there behind that work and that all the working papers for example can be fully supported and obviously if there was somebody a third party looking at those working papers they would come to the same conclusions as as a mate so from that side of things effectively what what happens with the with with bdo their work goes through their, their line manager effectively, and then the partner will review that work to make sure that it complies with the standards. Then effectively what happens is that then that gets transferred through to myself for a review so that I can then provide reliance and assurance to yourself as, as Audit and Governance Committee that the work being delivered is to the right standard and that we, we haven't got any questions or queries on that. Again, sometimes those timescales slightly slip because we may have to ask management for further clarity around some of the points that we are making. But again, that doesn't necessarily sort of um, affect those timescales too, too badly because what we're, what we're finding is that those discussions have already been held uh, at the closure meeting with the, with the auditee or with the, with the line manager within Tamworth Borough Council. So, so from that side of things, I think at, at the moment I would like to keep those key, those key performance indicators as, as they are, because one of the things that we I am trying to do is drive that those those timescales tighter, shall we say, um, moving forward. Because again, one of the one of the things that I do like to maintain is that there is that promptness of issuing the audit report because what you find that sometimes is that if there's a delay between the end of the audit issuing the draft audit report and the final audit report it can sometimes get lost and I think it needs to be a, a, a prompt message to management so that we can drive that those improvements forward. That was really clear thank you. Any further questions at all? Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chair. Um, on page 71 um, of my pack here, it mentions um, that we're not, there, there are no strategies or action plans in place to meet the net zero targets. Um, you mentioned before the, um, the key performance indicators that weren't being met. Is that costed into that? So if, if, you know, if you get what I'm saying, it, were, the, were the missed targets, does that include the climate change stuff? And if so, why, why have we missed that? And why since 2021 has, has nothing been actioned on that? Thank you. I think this, this, this is sort of an, an, an element that's sort of being um, 
sort of progressed within the council going for going forward in relation to that and i think from the from the audit review you'll notice that there were four, four high priority recommendations raised in in that area to move that move that forward because again i think we as a as a council i think we're at an early stage early stages in relation to that and i think that was where those improvements were sort of highlighting okay, okay. Do, do Well, it's an opportunity as I'm sat here to answer that directly. Um, so, yeah, the climate change um, sort of service area within the authority was um, audited oh, about six to nine months ago, and the um, recommendations were made for certain key things like cross cross party working across the authority with all the different service areas. Um, they haven't been actioned because I don't actually have any staff to help me with the climate change agenda and quite clearly I've got quite a lot to do um, so I, I'm actually trying to recruit this week um, I'm really struggling to recruit someone um, but I do have one candidate who I will be interviewing on Thursday um, fingers crossed is all I can say at this point in time but um, the recommendations um, that were made by the audit team do relate to the work that needs doing which I need resourcing to be able to do it. So as soon as someone's on board, we can tick those off. But until they're on board, I'm not going to tick them off because I because I, I can't <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you, Anna. Uh, any further questions? Oh, okay. Um, the recommendation in the report is uh, it's recommended that the committee endorse the internal audit's annual report at Appendix 1, which includes the results for quarter 4, up to and including the 31st of March 2023. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that? By Councillor Pritchard, seconded by Councillor Clark. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you for that report. <coughs> um, that brings us on to agenda item number 8, which is the annual government's statement and code of corporate governance. Um, and I'll hand over again to yourself for that one. Thank you, Chair. This report relates to the Council's annual governance statement and code of corporate governance, and I'll be asking for committee's approval of these documents so that the annual governance statement can be included within the Council's statement of accounts. The accounts and audit re regulations require the Council to conduct an annual review of the effectiveness of their systems of internal control and include a statement, which is the annual government statement, within our published statement of accounts. As in previous years, the annual, annual government statement has been prepared in line with SITFA stroke SOLIS delivering good governance in local government framework 2016. The annual government statement and code of corporate governance have been prepared in consultation with the chief executive, executive management team, and also assistant directors. Their comments and observations have been included in both documents and those comprise the appendices, Appendix 1 and 2 as presented. The annual governance statement is attached as Appendix 1 and only includes significant governance issues. The detail is contained within Appendix 2, which is the Code of Corporate Governance. It should be noted that Appendix 1 includes previous significant governance issues and how these were managed during 2022-23 financial year as the annex to Appendix 1. Both documents have been fully refreshed for 2022-23. The Code of Corporate Governance specifically goes into more detail around the core principles highlighted within the framework and highlights what assurance do we want and also what assurance do we actually get. This re year's review identified that the Council's governance arrangements largely comply with best practice and no areas of improvement were identified. I'm more than happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions on this report? Anybody? No, no, no. Okay, so the recommendations in the report are to approve the annual government's statement, uh, Appendix 1, and to uh, approve the Code of Conduct, Code of Corporate Governance, uh, Appendix 2. Uh, I've got a mover, moved by Councillor Pritchard, seconded by Councillor Clark. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, moving on to agenda item number nine, uh, the risk management quarterly report, um, and I will hand over to Joe Goodfellow for this one. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, so this is the regular quarterly risk management update for the committee for quarter four of the 22-23 financial year. A copy of the current corporate risk register is attached at appendix one. The corporate risk register has been updated by corporate management team this quarter and several notes and risk control measure due dates have been revised where they are ongoing or part of a project that finishes in the next financial year. There's been no change to the overall risk profile since the quarter three report was presented, which is summarised in Appendix 2. During quarter four, heads of service and their managers were invited to attend risk management training, which was provided by our insurers at Zurich Municipal. Further workshops have been organised and the information obtained regarding directorates' current and emerging risks will enable Zurich to independently appraise the current corporate risk register and make recommendations and suggest updates for the corporate risk register for 23-24. Appendices 3, 4 and 5 contain information from the World Economic Forum Global Risk Report. The top risks for 2023 as reported continue to be around the cost of living crisis, rising inflation and cyber attacks on critical infrastructure, which the Council continues to monitor. The committee is asked to endorse the corporate risk register. If anybody has any questions, happy to answer them. Okay, has anybody got any questions on that report? No? No? Okay. Um, so, um, as Joe just said, the recommendation is that we, the committee endorse the Corporate Risk Register. Um, if we can move for that, moved by Councillor Clark, second by Councillor Daniels. All those in favour? Nice carried. Thank you, everybody. Um, and this brings us on to agenda item number 10 which is the Audit and Governance Committee timetable, which you've all got a paper copy of in front of you, um, but was sent out on email as well. Um, has anybody got any comments uh, on the timetable of future items planned for this committee? Bear in mind the chair's not here, so... Uh, no? Okay. Everybody happy with that? I'm going to take silence as a yes. So we will move on to agenda item number 11 which is the exclusion of press and the public. Um, and uh, I'll read out the motion, which is that in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meetings and access to information, uh, regulations 2012 and section 100A, part four of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of the schedule 12a to the act uh, and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public i'll seek a mover and a seconder for that motion please moved by councillor doyle seconded by councillor clark all those in favor and that is carried and that brings an end to uh, the public part of the meeting so i'll thank um, any public in attendance uh, thank you um, and any public uh, watching.